Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. I'm a physician in the United Kingdom, and I am focused and have been focused on autoimmunity in COVID-19 since March 2020. So I have a unique take on COVID-19, and I like to look at COVID-19 research. And uh, because of my perspective on the disease, I usually approach it from a different way. Additionally, from a clinical perspective, we tend to be quite simple and straightforward when it comes to making diagnoses and looking at data. So here I am today, and I'm going to share with you a little bit of information with regards to the most recent update from Singapore. So we have the pleasure of getting some detailed data from Singapore with regards to childhood vaccinations. And you can see the question, how many children died of COVID-19 in Singapore? So we'll come to that in a second. And before I start, I'd like to remind you, please, if you're interested in understanding more about COVID-19, please join me on Substack for posts, podcasts, and videos since March 2020. So wonderful. Let's get into this paper. So you have it here. I'll make this full screen. The effectiveness of BNT162B2 vaccine against Omicron in children 5 to 11 years of age. So this study was done primarily by Sharon Tan and supported by Kelvin Tan. It was published in July 20th, 2022. So today is the 24th of July, and this is a pretty recent study. And so this is why I was interested in talking about it now while it's fresh and hot off the press. So um, before I go any further, the other important question I always ask when it comes to studies is about disclosures. Who supported the study? And so in this case, you can bring it on full screen again, author affiliations, uh, the So C. Hock School of Public Health, um, Ministry of Health in Singapore. Um, uh, there was a Ministry of Health again. Disclosure forms were clean. And this was what you would call a clean study. And there was no backing from any kind of um, pharmaceutical company or any organization that has a vested interest. And so that's good. And that's how we like research to be, nice and clean study. So what were the conclusions of the study? And I will share the conclusions and then I'll share a few thoughts about what it was that I think from a clinical point of view. So the conclusions of the study, I hope you can see this here. They looked at 255,000, almost 256,000 children in the analysis. And what they found was that for partially vaccinated children, vaccine effectiveness was 13% against infection, 24.3% against PCR confirmed infection, and 42% effective against COVID related hospitalization. That's partially vaccinated. In the fully vaccinated children, it was 36%, and that's against uh, SARS CoV 2 infections, 65% against PCR confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection and 82.7% against COVID related hospitalization. And so when you look at that, that looks pretty good in terms of this is protecting children from being hospitalized and getting infections. This is a good thing. And in conclusion, and again, I'll make it full screen, they pointed out during the period when the Omicron wave variant was predominant, this is what's important about this study, it was pure Omicron based, the vaccine reduced the risks of infection and hospitalization among children 5 to 11 years of age. So that's the kind of thing that parents would want to see. This is effective at reducing infection. Now, before I make any points, let's go a little bit further into the breakdown. And you can see here that this is a breakdown from inside the paper. As I said, it was 255,000 or 256,000 who were um, who were in the study. 173,000 were fully vaccinated at 67.7%. 
12% were still partially vaccinated, about 30,000 uh, 30, were still partially vaccinated at the end of the study, and 52,000. 20% were unvaccinated at the end of the study. And so you can see the spread of numbers over that period of time, but it's a good cohort of children to look at in order to try and understand it. And when you go into the supplementary report, and just in case you're interested, it's right at the bottom here. Let me just put it on full screen. When you want to see some more details, you'll see supplementary material and the supplementary appendix. If you click on that, it produces a PDF, and this is what I'm clicking on here. And in this here, I'm going to highlight a few of the numbers with regards to that. So when you look at the numbers with regards to this, I hope you can see this. Let me make this bigger so that it is clear. Uh, you can see here among the unvaccinated, and they are using a special measure called person days at risk. I'm not a stat statistician or an epidemiologist, but essentially they total the amount of days that someone or the cohort would have been at risk of infection in order to come up with these numbers. So it's not that 7 million um, children were vaccinated. It was still the same 170,000, but this was the person days at risk that they were looking at. And when they looked at hospitalizations here, 30 per 1 million person days versus 6.6 .6 for the fully vaccinated. What's interesting is they nicely broke it out with the partially vaccinated, showing that this is 19.1. Now, whether some people, and I make the argument about is someone vaccinated or unvaccinated if they're partially vaccinated, that's a question that I think uh, scientists and medics can argue about. If you have received one vaccine, should you be considered to be vaccinated? And therefore, should the outcomes be considered among the vaccinated if you had one vaccine which is partially vaccinated? If you understand what I mean. So this is showing good outcomes for infection and hospitalization. Now, that's good, all wonderful. And as we said, here is my question as a clinician. How many children died of SARS-CoV-2? That's really what I'm interested in when I think about it. So I'm going to show you what the outcomes or the results were here. And I'll reach to it in a second. And once I've shown it to you here, I'll try and see if I can make this bigger so that it stands out. Uh, make it bigger. Yep, here we go. Hopefully this is easier to read if I show this here. So here we have the results for the period of time. All right. As we said, 67% um, percent of the children were fully vaccinated. When you look at coming down here, um, infection and hospitalizations, there were 288 hospitalizations. Among hospitalized children, five received supplemental oxygen, four were admitted to intensive care units. One of those five children was unvaccinated, two partially vaccinated, and two were fully vaccinated. The crunch of the question here is this question. No deaths attributable to COVID-19. So that's the question. You have to remember that when I come from this from a clinical point of view, uh, you have to when you when you talk about COVID nineteen, we're at over six point five million deaths across the world, and when people die, they usually die of respiratory compromise. If somebody has COVID nineteen or are positive for SARS CoV two, um, it truthfully is neither here nor there if they haven't got symptoms. And once you understand the disease, 97% of people who die from this have at least one comorbidity. There's only 3% that don't have a comorbidity. And when we look at children, it's an exceptionally small percentage with regards to dying from COVID-19. Let me repeat the figures here. There were 288 hospitalizations out of the two 156,000 children. Of those 288 hospitalizations who were SARS-CoV-2 positive and had some kind of relevant symptoms, only five received oxygen. 
Now remember, when it comes to COVID-19, that's what you die from, a lack of oxygen. That's why people get on a ventilator and that's why they die. Of those five who received oxygen, four were admitted to intensive care. Of the five, we don't know if the unvaccinated was one of the four who ended up in intensive care. They didn't spe specify that. But critically, out of 256,000 patients or children, there were no deaths. Okay. Now, if that's okay for everybody, that's fine. I, I tell you what, there are a whole bunch of things that we can do stuff about when we start to think about what we are targeting. But if there are no deaths from COVID-19, do we have enough justification to vaccinate all those children? That's just a clinical question. Now, all of the major health and epidemiological public health um, organizations have said absolutely yes. This is for you, the parents, to reflect on. Uh, you make that decision with regards to what happens from here. So when it comes to that question, how many children died of COVID-19 in Singapore since the beginning of January to the end of April of 256,000 children? You had only four on intensive care, of which none died. That's my takeaway for the day. I hope this was of value and hope you understand a little bit more about what it is that um, I will share about. But please, if you want to hear more podcasts, posts and videos, please join me on Substack. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. I look forward to talking to you again and asking another challenging question.